What is up, y'all? Welcome back to episode 54 of Marlins Franchise. It's been a little while. We've got some catching up to do. It's August 3rd in 2030. Last time out, I introduced y'all to a bunch of the contenders. A little bit more of a deep dive on the Mets, Dodgers, D-backs, Nationals, and Braves. Because as we get deeper into this and the leaderboards start to fade uh, of recognizable names and start to get some names that we're not as familiar with, we can't just instantly look and have like a, a, a judgment, right? Like I look at this batter war for the NL, Fernando Tatis, Juan Soto, and Jor Jordan Lawler. I've instantly got profiles in my head of all three. Obviously Tatis and Soto are current superstars in the league and Lawler's on the, on the come up, but I know he's an elite prospect. I know he's supposed to be very good. It all checks out. That said, you start looking up and down and we're already seeing some names creep in that we gotta be like, hmm, who's that? You know, uh, we met Johan Benitez a bit more with the Arizona breakdown. Alexis Maldonado, of course, is on one of our rivals teams in the Mets. We, we've learned about him, but, you know, that's a new name that not everyone instantly knows and has a profile for in their head. Even our own Jonathan Turner um, is, is a player that I don't know. He's 23 and this is 2030. So obviously, even if he is a real player, he's a child right now. So... I don't know if it isn't even if it's even based off a real player. Doesn't matter, you know. Volpe we know, but like Bryce Bush, Jesus Alvarado, I know they're both power hitters because I've looked them in, into them more. But I don't know either. Like I don't have a, a real life profile on either. I don't even have a profile on Willie Vasquez, one of our former guys. Um, you know, from this from this sim that I, I now see is having a wonderful season. I know I know him because of that, but I don't know his real life profile at all. So. That was a big point there. Uh, we're going to get into a couple more teams today. Uh, let's see. What do I have on the docket? And I did kind of botch it a little bit because I played up ahead a, a little bit through the break and I'll get it or through the deadline. I'll get into that. But we had a series with the Brewers at the end of the month. That would have been the perfect time to investigate them and, and see what they're what they're up to lately. But we're going to go Brewers, Padres, Phillies. I don't know what order, but those are the three teams that we're going to cover. But I've got some news about the deadline. Now, one thing I think this game could really improve upon is somehow making the deadline a bit more immersive. We just had the real-life trade deadline. It's August 10th when I'm making this video. So we're just over a week from the actual trade deadline. It was August 2nd this year, and it was amazing. And we've had a lot of electric ones lately. Uh, I do a show with my friend Nick Pollock where we're just live streaming and reacting live as things come out. It's awesome on the day of. A lot of other people do that stuff too, by the way. We didn't make that up. You know, of course, MLB Network's doing it, uh, ESPN. That stuff's awesome, and we've had great deadlines. It's hard to feel that immersion in this game. You do have to seek it out, and so we are going to look into the trades. Now, this happened to just not be a very robust deadline. However, there were some key moves I want to highlight, including one of our own. We made a move. It's a pretty it's a pretty sizable move for what we're trying to do, which is make an impact but not shake things up, so to speak. So a solid mid-tier move you'll, you'll see when I get to it. But let's start with those aforementioned Mets. Now, they're down at 59 and 53. Uh, they're way back in the division, but they're only a game and a half back in the wild card. So they're fully in the thick of it. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10. We talked about them and, and the things that they've got going on. They went out and said, you know what? We need to improve the bullpen. Let's go get Devin Williams at 35 years old, almost 36. He was with the Angels having a brilliant season, .95 ERA, 111 whip in 38 innings with 11 shutdowns, three saves, and two wins uh, in his 26 games. He's pitched three games for the Mets already, three innings, six ERA, 1.00 whip. Who gives a crap? I mean, because it's just such a small sample, it means literally nothing. He's very good, though. 80 stuff, 70 movement, 40 control, extreme ground ball, 30 stammy. That is a big piece for their bullpen. Uh, and what did they give to get him, by the way? Let's take a gander. Tim Warby. And, you know, that's what you get. Now, is he a, is he a rental? Let's see. Uh, yeah. So he's a, he's a rental. He's 35 years old. You don't get a whole lot in return for something like that. Even somebody who's as good as he is. So Tim Warby going back, 19-year-old Australian prospect. Low work ethic and adaptability. Not very good. I wonder if uh, the Angels, I mean, they're just idiots. So maybe they just messed up. 
and they took too low of a point. I, again, you're not going to get that much. I, I'm roasting just to try to be funny, but it, I don't really expect the returns to be that robust, so I get it. This is about the worst kind of prospect you could settle on, a finesse pitcher. I mean, he's a lefty at least, but a finesse guy with low adaptability and work ethic, like what are you clinging to? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. You're going to get young prospect that you can maybe turn something into, turn, turn him into something. Maybe the Angels have him more on like a 35-40 level, which is a big difference from the 25 that we have. So maybe they see something there. He is pretty fresh. Um, he's only been in the league oh since this year. He just got traded. We have trades on. Oh, first off, he's an international guy, so it doesn't matter for him. But if he had just been drafted, he could be traded right away. We have trades right away. Like, why, why wait a year? That's dumb. Um, and that's how it is in MLB now anyway. The thing that we do have that MLB doesn't have is we can trade draft picks too. I don't know why they don't. It's so stupid. So I like to take, take my worlds to have them. Uh, let's go back to the Angels. Now, this is why I, I wanted to make a joke about them, though, and suggest that maybe they're stupid because I don't understand why they wanted to trade Devin Williams. Two, two things. One. They're actually in it. The AL West sucks this year. Texas is leading at 500, 57 and 57. The Angels are 55 and 59. They're only two games back. So yeah, they're four games under, but they're only two back. So that's not too bad. Um, so they're in the mix and they're only five out of the wild card. So why would they trade Devin Williams? I guess because they're like, we can just go out and get Edwin Diaz instead. Like what? I don't get it. Now he does have a year... Uh, of potential extra control with a vesting option for another 11.8 mil. He has to finish 40 games, and he's at, uh, oh, I don't know where I'm going to find that. I don't have that on anything. Let's see what we got here. Looking for GF, GF. I, I have a GF, but I'm looking for a different GF right now. Game's finished. Here we go. 17. Oh, they're golden. That's not vesting, and he's not even closing for them. So, They must love Tim Warby because they just had to get him out of, they had to get Devin Williams out of there and then replace him with another old rental, essentially. Because again, that's not going to vest. He has to finish like so many of their remaining games. <laughs> 23 more. Yeah, right. No, he only has to finish them. They don't have to win or anything, but still, no shot. Especially because he's not even the closer. So I don't know what's up with that. Otani's in long relief these days because he's a terrible pitcher unfortunately, and he's a pretty crummy hitter. Oh, man, he busted in. Oh, he's 36. Okay. he did. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He is at the end of his career here. That doesn't mean he busted. Hang on, let's see. He led the league in homers one year, 2025. Uh, okay, he did not bust at all. He's just old. In fact, just last year, he hit 42 homers with 101 ribbies and a 136 WRC+. Plus. He's just having a down year here at age 35 because he's 35. He just turned 36 a month ago. That's totally fine. Well, how does pitching go over the course of his career? He was, that's not, that's his career pitching stats, Paul. You got it. So starting here in 2022, he had a very nice pitching year. We'll just go by war on this. He went from three war. We just round, so two war, 1.6. It's just two. Two, three, five, which led the league in 2026. Four in 2027 down to 1, 1 1.4, and then minus 1.1 this year. So he's fallen off. He's hit the wall, but he's old, and he had a great career. Shohei's a god. Anyway, not who we're here to ne necessarily talk about. So that was the other big trade. Uh, and then there was another one that's actually going to open up our coverage of, of some other teams, and we'll go to another division rival, the 58 and 55 Phillies, who are in last in the division and 12 out but only three out of the wild card because our division is the anti-AL West. Everyone's good. Everyone's over 500. They don't have anyone over 500. They have one 500 team. And so we are, uh, we are in, a, in a major battle here in our division for that wild card. Now, no one, we're probably not even going to catch the Braves. I mean, five and a half is doable, but it's, it's tough even with two months. I mean, we could chisel. It, it's certainly open. The Nats could catch them too. Mets and Phillies probably won't, but let's talk about the Phillies because they made a trade, and I got to find this guy. Oh, he, they got for a reliever as well. Or they traded for a reliever as well, Stevie Branch. Now, I know I've just shown you three deals, two, all three for crusty relievers. He's 33, Branch is. 
that was the bulk of the deadline. I promise. These are the A moves. <laughs> so it's what we were dealt with. And that happens sometimes. That happens in real life as well. And so I'm not suggesting that OTP needs to make every deadline the most crazy action-packed thing ever. But if they could weave storylines in about guys that are available and set up things where there are bidding wars for elite superstars who've been made available, that'd be, that would be amazing. I don't know if it's possible. I'm sure it's something that they've at least thought of and, and maybe tried to map out some plans because... It does seem like something that they would want in the game, but I hope that another excellent deadline kind of sparks that fire for them again to see if they can do anything with it. Again, I don't know. I'm always careful to not just say, do this, because I don't know the first thing about coding, except that it seems very difficult. So I'm not around, you know, I don't like to be, you know, demanding of things. I like to have suggestions and be like, if that's possible, that'd be dope. Um, so anyway, Stevie Branch, uh, he qualifies as a big trade because he has a 50 reliever, 65 stuff, 60 movement, 40 control, 35 stammy. Could come in and be a good piece for them. L no leadership, uh, no work ethic, but as a reliever, you can be fine with that. He was brutal for Houston. So I don't know what Philly's expecting here, but again, this is what qualified as a big trade, and we get to use it as a jump off to meet the Phils. Now, for my tagline on the fills, I gave him all gas, no breaks. And for me, what that means in my head is all gas being the offense is good, no breaks, crummy pitching. Let's take a look at what they're doing this year. You see a lot of single digits. In fact, a lot of top fives all the way up until strikeouts, which kind of come with the territory of a power hitting team. So it's not even that bad that they're ninth there. They don't run. You don't really need to run when you're destroying the ball the way they are same with the base running so stolen bases and base running and strikeouts being there those are all justifiable based on everything else they have which is top five everywhere including top three in batting average obp slugging which of course means they're on base and slugging ops war woba run score now a lot of this is overlap i grant that but still hits home runs their first i mean it's awesome the ones that they're first in are home runs woba OPS, slugging, it's awesome. So their offense crushes. Now their pitching is equally as bad. Double digits across the board except for their third in strikeouts. So that's good. They, they at least have some dominance there. Eighth in walks, which is whatever. Twelfth in defensive efficiency, 14th in zone rating. So they've kept the, the trend of present day Phillies as far as the defense goes. But their pitching is legitimately bad. Uh, so they're out slugging everybody to kind of stay in contention right now. Stevie Branch is obviously not going to flip that in any way, but let's meet the ball club. Let's see what they've been up to here um, it, over these many years. First off, let's do the history. And now let me get my notes back up. They have one division win. It was back in 2024. They have a World Series win, the 2023 World Series, and they have three playoff appearances. They were all in a row, 23, 24, 25. And they went third, first, third to get those. So they won the World Series as a wild card. They lost uh, the playoffs as a division winner and then as a pretty uh, tight wild card, 82 and 80 in 2025. They snuck in there and unsurprisingly, they didn't make a whole lot of noise. So they've been all right. They're kind of like Milwaukee, who we're going to get into, um, where the, their success is at the front end of the, uh, of the Sims so far. They've been fifth in four of the last five years. They were fourth in the other year. Now, because we're in a good division, the only real stinker of a season is 2026, 56 and 106. You can't, you can't fake that. That's just pure trash. But like a 70 and 92, that's a run of the mill, like not terrible bad team, if that makes sense. Like if you won 70 games, you, you, you mess some teams up a little bit here and there, like 70 dubs. Again, I'm not trying to pretend it's good. I'm just saying, as far as bad teams go, 70 and 92 is pretty run-of-the-mill ho-hum. Um, and that's where they were. That's their second worst here. And then a couple 481 win percentage seasons, 78 and 84. Uh, and then 58 and 55 right now puts them in fifth. So our dif difficult division has made them look worse if you just go off division rankings. But that's why you got to dig a little deeper. So they are definitely in a little bit of a state where this imbalanced team, I bet, has hurt them. Because you look and you start with the crummy season, 2026, they had a 531 ERA, which, of course, that's terrible. They were probably the worst team in the league that year. Then they go 466, 444, 429, 466. So the pitching has consistently been an issue. It's just that now they've got the uh, offense up to start counterbalancing it. 
They hit 225, 223 the last two years before 264 this year. It only lists batting average. I wish I had a better stat than that. But even just looking at that batting average, they have a 32-point jump this year. That's game-changing. So now, let's meet the squadron. We go here, look at the meet team. Uh, by the way, they are, are, they're also our mirror image because of this with the insane offense and the dog water pitching. And in a weird way, not only are they a mirror image of us, but they are us. And what I mean by that is they have all of our damn players. Now, if you look up and down this list here of their top position, or top player at every position, they've got Justin Vasos at first, Noel V. Marte at second. They rank 11th and 7th, respectively. And you're like, okay, well, so oh, they have two of your guys. What, what are you crying about? And then you shove me, which I'm like, don't shove me. That was rude. However, that's why you can't look at just that list because they got a bunch of our other guys too, okay? They got Joe Erlin, if you will remember. Where is Joe Erlin? Oh, he might be smoked. But when I wrote up the list, he was on the team. So he might be hurt or demoted. Uh, he's not hurt. So maybe he's in the minors or maybe they got rid of him. Joe Erlin. I cannot find the keys right now. Joe Erlin's in Lehigh Valley. So he's in AAA. Uh, they've also got Mackenzie Gore, Garrett Crochet, Vinny Pasquantino, and Ben Hernandez. So you see Ben Hernandez here is a reliever who never really pitched for us. I shouldn't say never really. That kind of soft pedals it. He never pitched for us. We had him as an injured player, um, and then he was coming back on, I forget what his deal was, but um, I want to say he wanted more than than 1.2. I would think I would have kept him for 1.2, but he was coming off an injury. He was asking for more than this in ARB, so I smoked him. I let him go. Uh, yeah, he was not offered arbitration, became a free agent. I want to say he, wa he wanted closer to like three, four mil. Because here, technically now, I don't know, I don't know if this is actually true. Because you see he was on three teams in 2029. It's 1.9 mil for each. That leads me to believe that it was just 1.9 mil and not 1.9 times three. Like we didn't all pay an equal share. So I'm going to say it was 1.9. But then his ARB number from 1.9 probably was like 3.7 or something. I think it was approaching four with Ben Hernandez. And I just didn't want him. I was like, that's too much. So we moved on from him. We moved him to Colorado. We didn't even move him here. Oh, no, no. We moved him. was traded by KC. We got him for Ali Sanchez. And then we moved him to Colorado along with Bryce Clavin kind of want to see how he's been doing for Corniel, uh, who then didn't really stick with us and is now in Detroit. He was not offered arbitration. Uh, that's right. We didn't want to pay him. So we're like, here, you guys deal with it. They didn't want to pay him either, which I guess they just really wanted Bryce Clavin. I mean, who does have a 75 avoid K? There is a, there is a carrying skill there that they feel like maybe he could find some success in Coors if he gets called up. So anyway, that is, um, and then Garrett Crochet, you've got who we just let go as well. Did we trade him here? We did. He was, he was in the Bustamante's deal. And so he's good, but he was going to be another expensive guy for a reliever, 4.4 mil. Just not what we need to spend our money on because we feel like we can cultivate relievers pretty easily. Uh, he has a 355 ERA, 134 whip this year for Crochet. Not too bad. Too many walks, though. So we're not really missing him all that much. Mackenzie Gore's in the rotation. He's bad. 122 innings with a... 531 ERA, 157 whip. Uh, you can't really fake that. And again, I've questioned the Sierra numbers throughout this, this sim. And I'm sorry, I, I just don't think a 22% K rate, 11% walk rate, 1.1 homer nine, and a 9.7 hits per nine yields a 399 Sierra. I don't care if you're neutralizing the home runs and the BABIP or whatever. Like, I, I don't see how it gets there. So I don't trust the Sierra anymore. I need to change that. But I was going to do this yesterday uh, on one of the hitting stats. I forget where you changed this. I thought it was in here. I thought it was here. Maybe this is it. Hang on. Actually, you know what? It is. Okay. So this actually leads me to talk about something else that happened yesterday that, oh my God, I almost crapped myself. And sorry to be vulgar, but it is the truth. For some reason, I do not know what happened or why. Hang on, let's let's tighten that up a little bit. That's too many stats. Um, I, I reset the game 
to change my fonts. Some of you may have noticed the fonts different. I went back to the default. I didn't, I didn't like the other one as much as I thought I did. I come back and all I did, insta restart. No, no do this with anything. Nothing. Nothing different. I open up. They can't find, they, they say there's no game files. Now, I will admit, normally for me, that's a, that's a meltdown moment. Like pretty instantly where I'm like, I, I'm, I, I panic. And it's a stupid way to react because you're not going to get anything done when you're instantly jumping to such an overreaction. It's like, okay, dude, you know, your freak out is, is just not going to help you here. Relax a moment. So I did. I stepped back and I was like, I know the fix here is to just, well, that's not good. We hadn't really done anything, so it's fine, but that's hilarious that that happened. But I, I know the fix here is to change the path. Uh, and, and the path, you know, where all, the, where all the saves are. I could see the folder of all the saves on my computer, so I wasn't really freaked out that I had lost it. Something happened where the path was now invalid, but I was like, how do you do it? Because it's not readily available here in this screen that you guys are seeing right now. This was just empty in the load game screen. It said, you have no files. And I'm just like, <laughs> that's funny, but I do, so stop. And so um, the way you do it here, I'll show you guys just in case you ever run into it. Don't panic. Do not panic. But you go and you, uh, you change it in the settings down here at the bottom strip when, after it's done saving here, even though we didn't do anything. You go down to settings here and you go into expert and you change the, the data path. And so I just had to find where the, where the games were and I got it done. But my, my stomach did drop. But instead of my normal freak out, and listen, I don't need, I'm not trying to totally back pat myself for doing the bare minimum of not overreacting. Like, don't overreact, idiot. You know? Um, but got it all done. It was all good. No worries. Let's get back to the Phillies now. I don't think any of that saved uh, what I was doing there with those stats. But let's get back to Gore. Edit. Let's try this again. Move the wins. I, I don't even really... It's going to do it again. I'll fix it another time. It's not that important right now. Let's get back to the Phils. <laughs> I don't know why that's breaking it. They, they're like, you are not. You are not going to discount wins. That will be the first stat or else. Or else what? And then, or else like 10 restarts in a row. Okay, fair enough, game. You freaking win. Anyway, I'll read off some of these stats here while we're waiting for it to load back up for the Phillies. So they have all our guys. Marte, Vasos, Joe Erlin, Gore, Crochet, Vinny P, Ben Hernandez. Only, now this is when I took the notes, so let's make sure this is still accurate. Only one batter was under 104 WRC plus, and it was a backup catcher who's doing terribly. Brett Auerbach. He's got a 32. Hang on, let's make sure we're on the right thing. I feel like there's a split here. Scope, majors, batting view, all batters. Okay, this is right. This is right. So it's a little different. There's a, I see a 102, 103. I see a few in there, and then this Danny Aldretti guy is up now a little bit. Um, it looks pretty fresh, though. When did he come up? When did this joker come up? 626. I don't know what exactly. I think I took the notes in July. So either way, he didn't have enough playing time for me to because he wasn't a starter either when I took the notes. The bottom line, though, nothing really changes from that stat. The, what I was trying to impress upon y'all is that everyone's been like average or better. Everyone who's playing meaningful time. You got a couple guys here. You got a backup catcher who's terrible. And then this Aldretti who they're playing maybe for defense. Oh, no, I don't even know why they're playing him. They're just making a bad decision. They can afford it, I guess. He had an amazing run in 67 plate appearances at AAA. They're trying to see if there's anything to it, and clearly so far there is not. But anyway, everybody else is at 102 or better, and McMahon doesn't even play. So uh, as far as starters that aren't Perez and Aldretti, they're 103 or better. Noel is at 111, Joe Perez at 103, Vinny Pasquantino in a backup role is at 119. Uh, you got Vasos at 137, 37 having an amazing year, 111 for Marte, 132 for Polanco, uh, Andy Pages, 155, he's been remarkable, Danny Aldretti at 67, as I mentioned, Mario Williams at 120, and Bryce Harper still 
dominating at 156 WRC plus strength uh, walking 15% of the time that's actually a several year low holy smokes that's funny when your 15% walk rate is your lowest since 2019 Harper's such a god. I love him, man. He's so awesome. 26% K rate. That's plenty palatable with everything else he does. At age 37, he's been a god. This is one of the best mega contracts ever. Now, we did boost it just in general. Not I didn't do anything specific to Harper, but when you go 95.95 on the aging speed, that is inherently going to help uh, a good handful of guys. And if they stay great like this and they avoid injury... They can have long, prosperous careers, and that's exactly what we're seeing out of Harper. Back to my notes here. So let's go look at Jorlin real quick because he is sent out, but when I took the notes, he was crushing it. So let's see, did he fall off or did they just send him down while he was doing well? With No, he's killing it. With Philly, 172 plate appearances, 12 homers, 298, 374, 596 slash good for a 161. WRC plus. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How did he get? Why, why is he sent out, man? He should be unhappy. This is bullshit. It doesn't say your, your send downs and everything. I guess I can look in the game log. He was sent out very recently, about a week ago in game time. Obviously. Um, yeah, and I hope he's languishing down there. You know, listen, normally I say... Keep your head up, do your thing, and grind. I'd be pissed if I got sent out too. In this instance, 29 years old, like what's he got to prove down there? And, you know, th there's all this talk about how baseball is a meritocracy. He comes out, has his best year ever by far. It's, a, it's still a relatively small sample at 172 plate appearances, but it's enough to trust when you're walking more than you're striking out. Yeah, this is horseshit. This is horseshit. I don't blame him at all. He crushed in AAA last year. We didn't really have a whole lot of time for him. 257 plate appearances of, a, of nearly league average ball at 95 WRC+. Plus. So we moved on from him. He had an opportunity, and they just took it away from him. It's bullshit. I'm mad for Joe Erlin. So Podges obviously is better. That's fine. This Mario Williams guy is probably the one that took his spot, so to speak. I mean, he's been playing all year. Is it Podges? Did they get him? They traded for him preseason. Who's DHing? Polanco, he's been good. I mean, their offense is insane. So on some level, I get it because even their backup outfielder, Jordan Byers, has a 138 WRC+. plus. So I guess it's just a numbers game. Maybe they should have traded Joe Erlin for a freaking hitter then, dude, because they can't, or for a pitcher because they can't pitch for shit. So they had five yellows crushing. Um, Joe Erlin, Aldretti, Podges, Byers, and Williams. Is, is what, uh, the note that I took. Now, I wonder why I included Aldretti in that because he's clearly terrible. So did he just fall off the map or did I just foolishly include him? Oh, he absolutely fell off the map. Oh my God. So yeah, I had to have taken these notes like in early July because Aldretti went, these are his WRC plus totals by month. April, 168. May, 180. June, 140. July, 35. And he's uh, 0 for 4 in August so far for a zero WRC+. plus. So just the July from hell. He was crushing. So that's why he's playing, by the way. And what by yellows, of course, I mean the yellow uh, number, which means they're like average type players. So who did I say again? It was uh, Joe Orland, who's not up anymore. Aldretti, who has fallen off. Podges, Byers, and Williams, who are all still doing very well. So their offense is wonderful. Um, I'm kind of beating a dead horse. Let's go look at what's going on with this pitching and why does it suck so bad? So their best starters are like mid fours type guys. Ben Brown, 467 ERA, Lou Helmig, 431, and Luis Patino, 443. But then you got two guys over five, Gore at 531 and Humberto Mejia at 573. But when you got such a good offense, they're actually surviving. Like, you know, I mean, Gore's four and nine, and I know win loss is not the only thing, but with a five thirty one, to even be that, <laughs> to even be four and nine is kind of decent. And uh, Mejia at five seventy three ERA is five and seven. He has a legitimately fine uh, win loss record. Like there's nothing wrong with it at five and seven. Um, so yeah, th this is crazy. This is some like um, late nineties, early two thousand steroid era stuff 
when guys would just be like regular full-time starters having mid five ERAs. And it was like, well, that it is what it is type deal. And, and to kind of drive that point home a little bit, it's, it, we're not quite in that sort of era, but the 431 and 443, and even the, 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 the three that are under five aren't that far off the average as far as ERA plus. The 431 is basically average at a 99, then 96 and 91. So like those guys are actually kind of fine. Three solid workhorses there with that offense, that can work. Now, Gore's at 80 and Humberto Mejia's at 74. Those are far too low. They should have guys that can replace them, uh, but they don't, I guess. And then their bullpen, I actually took a note about somebody who they don't have. Oh, yeah. Um, Hayter is cooked for the year. Oh, still has 11 months, but he's still a G. Will he be a G when he gets back? He's 36 years old. Uh, he'll be 37. By the time he gets back, I don't know. He has 105 stuff right now, y'all. I like I like the true number. I don't like that it cuts off at 80. Um, for a while, I didn't know what that meant. And I think I always had it. I would always have no cut off, which that is like, it's very clear what it means, but I never like internalized it and fully understood. And I just always left it. But no, the yes is way better. If somebody's a 105 stuff on the 2080 scale, I want to know that. Uh, so that's that's Hader. He was a god for them for 26 innings before going out. 173 RA, 0.96 whip. So what have they done in his stead? Let's look at their relievers right now. Sorted by strikeout minus walk rate. They've got some guys that are doing or that have some good skills. Neither of them have the ERAs to go with it. Hieronimo Franz, Franzuia, Franzuia, Franzua, Franzua. Franzua um, has a 24% strikeout minus walk rate, which is fantastic. 565 ERA, 134 whip. So what's happening? I don't know. 322 Babip is pretty. Oh, 2.2 homers. Never mind. There it is. That's it. That's it. And that's all. Like, it, it's a home run fest. 2.2 per nine is insane. And that's what Hell Chris Oliveras has as well. So even though he has a 20% strikeout minus walk rate, which is also very good. He also has 2.2 homer nine, and you cannot survive that. You cannot. Um, next up is Sam Howard, who has a 15% strikeout minus walk rate. Pretty solid. 292 ERA, but a 162 whip. Ugh. 351 bad. There goes that shitty defense. So it all works hand in hand here, and that's why they have to be so strikeout heavy. They do have five of their guys at 23% strikeout rate or higher, ranging as high as 30%. For Franzua, but um, I mean Ben Hernandez, Taylor Rogers, and Randy Dobnik at twenty seventeen and thirteen percent respectively. They're putting a lot in the hands of that defense now. Dobnik is getting the most luck in the universe. Uh, he has a two fifty six Babbitt, but I say it's luck because you know he's not very overpowering. He's a finesse type of guy, extreme ground ball, and they have such a dreadful defense that to actually foster a two fifty six. Babbitt, things are really working out for him. Crochet has a 269, which is very nice as well. So, I mean, Taylor Rogers still doing his thing at, at 39 years old. Um, and by doing his thing, I mean in the majors, because he's actually been terrible for them. They actually picked him up in a 4th of July deal. So he only has nine innings with them. He's been dreadful, 838 ERA, 145 whip. He wasn't very good in Texas, 534, 136. And it might be time to hang him up. It might be time to hang him up for Taylor Rodgers. He just doesn't really have it anymore. So that's their current team for the Phillies. They have six top prospects, uh, top 100 prospects. Only one is top 70, though. So they're a bit more like depth than dominance with uh, Eduardo Pomar being number 12. And he's a relatively recent guy, a scouting discovery from June 1st, 2027. So three years ago. And he's just, you know, solid hitter. Corner outfielder, you know, 60 range, 50 error, 55 arm. That's not really going to do a whole lot in center. But uh, everything else could check out for a really nice corner outfielder. They have Rodolfo Gutierrez, Armand uh, Aramitani from us, by the way. That was part of the big, uh, the big Arcadian Muller deal. And, you know... We spiked a big find, and 
the main reason I was open to trading him is because despite the the glowing uh, bat profile, he has no position. He does have high work ethic and intelligence. Uh, that's a that's a combo I generally love. So I am understanding that he might be a G, but it's going to be a first or DH unless a team just, I mean, this team might just force him in the outfield because they don't give a shit. <laughs> Their defense sucks. But I felt comfortable doing it for a true game-changing superstar in Muller. Um, so we did it. I'm not as worried about getting burned by somebody who is that low on the defensive spectrum at that age, even though he does have, again, a good profile that suggests that he should become at least a major league hitter. And he's still a long way out at age 18. They have Jordan Jackson, a 23-year-old, who's working his way up. He's actually... Wait, what, what, is this Colorado? It says COL there. No. Is that college? He got drafted in 2029. Okay, that must be his college year then. But why isn't he... So then what's, what's he doing right now? He's in double A. I, I don't understand. Why isn't he... Oh, here, here's... This is weird. There's two sets of past... Oh, it's because he's a two-way guy. Has he been shifted to hitting? He has. Okay, I'm a moron. Sorry. I see why. I see why. So his pitching, it was going to be like run-of-the-mill, mediocre-as-hell type pitcher. Nothing special. 40, 45, 65 is his peak. And that's not moving the needle. My man already has 90 gap power, 70 potential contact, 60 potential power, and then 55 on the eye in avoid case. Jordan Jackson's a G. He's only 93rd on the ranks right now. I feel like he's somebody that could have been even higher. He is a corner outfielder, but, and I know gap power is not the end all be all, but a 90 is pretty bananas and he's already got it. He already has a 90. So I don't know. Pretty nice. And then Rob Lozano at 99 and Javi Velasquez at a hundred. And then their only other ranked guy is uh, Mario Marufo at 190. So that's the Phillies. And again, they're grinding out this year. They're trying to get into the playoffs. Um, do we have any say over that? We have to. Yeah, we have six games against them in September. Speaking of games and trades and moves and all that, let's get back to our team. Let's get on. Let's get our focus here. And I think we're just going to do the Phillies for this one. The uh, Brewers and Padres will be in the next episode just because I went pretty deep on the Phillies there. So And the game shut down like 11,000 times. So let's just go ahead and get into the move that we did. So... I was looking at the crew and everything that we had going on, and I'm like, do we really have a lot of moves to make? Probably not. Maybe could have done something with the offense, which is not the strength of the team. It is fine, though. I'm not that worried about it. We're fourth in homers. We've got a bit of a new power-focused offense, so I'm not as concerned about buttoning it up, uh, especially with our pitching remaining elite. We're first in ERA for... Overall, starters and bullpen, I know that's a lot of overlap, runs allowed again. That's that's four ways to say not the same thing, but a lot of sim it's it, The first one is then broken down into the next two, and then it's all just a composite of the other one. So it looks flashier than it is, but we are also second in war, opponent's average, first in home runs allowed, um, eighth in strikeouts, which is just okay, but fourth in walks. And then the defense, third in efficiency, seventh in zone rating. So we moved up on the defensive piece. So as I looked at it, the only thing I really thought that we could do, which would have also uh, contributed to a goal, is to maybe try to upgrade Carlos Colmenares. But it was bleak out there, y'all. There just wasn't really much out out there on the on the shortstop market that made me say, mm, let's do something here. I could have tried to go big and really shake things up. That would have taken probably multiple prospects. And, and for what? Do we really, really need to? I was like, no. So I kind of keyed in on one player that was doing a little bit too poorly to stay in his current role. And that was Brian Mata, who I've been happy with thus far. We've only had him for one year, but his first year was excellent. 322 ERA, 124 whip. Four win season by our war, two win season by uh, uh, Fangraph's war. Our war being B ref war. Uh, and the difference between those, by the way, is Fangraph's war focuses on FIP as the starting point, which is kind of the underlying skills as opposed to what happened. And I like for pitchers, especially for a single season and an award, I kind of like our war that, that puts some of that luck. Like I understand that an ERA can be a bit luckier. 
because they had amazing defense and everything worked their way and they got a lot of breaks and they had a better schedule. Okay, but it, that's that's the season. That's how it should be, right? So I, I, I don't necessarily want to know, like, quote unquote, what should have happened. And it's not even, I, I don't want to go too far on it either because uh, the Fangraphs War is not like some broken, worthless thing that I don't like. It, I understand the merits of it for sure. Hey, it was a strikeout by Akil Badu. That's weird. I love him, but he's so frustrating. Um, I just like the R war a bit more for for pitchers because I wanted I wanted to go off of and again when you're talking about like individual awards and stuff like that, I want to know, you know, it would take into account what happened. Anyway, that is to say that he did not follow up last year with the the same kind of year this year. 505 ERA, 145 whip. And listen, he's not an overpowering guy with a 55 stuff. He is extreme ground ball, and our defense is better this year. Um, actually, I don't even know if it's better than it was last year, but it, it, it's solid this year. I, I cannot remember. Were we bad defensively last year? I mean, we've had Coleman Ares. We had Noel Ve. Muller's not a defensive god, so he's certainly not like adding them. We do have Walker at third, though. We did kind of sacrifice some defense at a key position for a big bat. But anyway, Mata was the guy that I, I identified as somebody who we could improve. And I found what I thought was a perfect fit in Dustin May. In fact, it's really not that different than Mata. However, I thought getting a, even another guy that's very similar, let's take, our, let's take our chances with him, you know, spiking some better luck and things working his way. Um, he's a rental, so he didn't cost us a lot. In fact, it didn't cost us anything. We got them to keep the full thing, and I ended up giving them a, a big hitting prospect um, who has no, no speed, no position, no adaptability, no work ethic. I don't think he'll pan out. They might believe in him a bit more. Uh, OSA isn't even as high on him as our scout. Our scout believes this is a good bat. 55 or better all across the board with a 65 eye in contact and a 60 gap. For the 17 year old about to be 18 that felt like an easy give though you know you got to give a little something he's 6 8 2 30 i mean he's a beast he could become an absolute stud i'm willing to take that chance though we got to focus on the here and now i wanted to fortify the rotation again i basically got another mata but i'm okay with that i really am i don't know what i just did um that's okay because i think if i just left mata alone he probably would have gotten better i want another one though that just so we have somebody different to turn to as well. Like, just the aspect of, hey, he's a little bit different. He throws a bit harder, so he can be a bit nastier, perhaps. Um, cool. That's fine. Again, they break down pretty similarly. Um, Mata has a 10-point movement edge. May has a 5-point control edge. Everything else is the same as far as, well, stuff is the only other thing there. And they're both maxed out, of course, at their... Uh, what, wait, what? Why are they 10 points different in overall, though? It might be stamina. No, because that's five points for May. That's kind of interesting to me. I would have thought that they'd be like 50 55. Oh, it's because Mata is in the rotation or in the bullpen right now. Let's see what he looks like as a starter. That has to be it, right? 45. Yep. And in fact, he goes down 50 55 50. So as a starter, the comparison makes even more sense. It actually is a bit more of an upgrade when you break it down like that. Now we get five point edge in stuff and control and we give the 10 points back in movement. But with our ballpark, that was a trade off I was willing to make. Again, this is not a huge upgrade. This is more about the depth, less about like anti Mata. In fact, if May gets off to a crap start, which so far he's been uh, fine in five and two thirds who cares it's a nothing sample but if he gets off to a crap start with us we'll switch him right back i i, I will just i will just undo the move and, and reverse them but it's still an extra arm for us it's still another guy to help lengthen things up so let's get into some games here or not you know just start simming some not actually playing them out oh we have another series against milwaukee maybe we will do you know what it's at 44 minutes yeah we can do milwaukee i'm pivoting i'm pivoting we just took that series against san francisco we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the Milwaukee breakdown here. Let's get a sweep. Boom, we do in 11, 3 one dub. That's Shane Boz going six and two thirds scoreless, one hit, two walks, nine strikeouts. Uh, Wagner Morissette did blow the save though. 
and Danny Puente had to clean it up. Dang. We had uh, Tucker Goyard, Hall. Justin Tucker got his second homer. Highland Hall got his 25th. Oh, I did make a couple other moves I should uh, uh, update y'all on. So, we also have Justin Tucker up, which might have happened at the end of last episode. Yeah, he's been around for 46 plate appearances. Actually, no. That might just be... Let me just look. Instead of trying to speculate, I can actually just look it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would have been in another episode. So, y'all would have either... I would have either highlighted him or you would have incidentally seen that he was in there. So Justin Tucker's up and playing. And then I called up a guy named Ricky Morales. Now we got him in this Tampa Bay trade. This was like a this was like a player dump based on what I'm I'm looking at here. Probably just a bunch of guys on the 40, um, along with 16th and 19th round draft picks. So it's a lot. It's like it's four players and two picks. Uh it was really a dump though. We I remember this trade vaguely with Fitterer and Machma and uh, Aloe Vera, as I called him. And I realized, you know, yes, it, it, it's, it's quantity for quality. We got a 19-year-old at the time, Ricky Morales, um, spark plug, good defender, speedster, not much of a bat. And that's exactly, you know, what I expect here. He was having a great little run uh, at AAA. And so I gave him the call because he can be a good fourth, fifth outfielder type. He wasn't that great at double A this year, 104 WRC plus there, then a 190 for a 10 game run at triple A. And I was like, you know what? You can get the call. He has a 17 with us so far. So that's probably temporary, but we'll see. Giving him a little burn here. How close are we to J Rod being back? Very. He's not hurt anymore. Five days from now, he will be back. Let's go. We're one week away from getting another bullpen piece in Daniel Palencia, who I believe we traded for in this offseason for or no no it was on june 8th for sam hinches and alexander corniel with the mets how's corniel doing oh he's on he's in detroit now how the heck did he get here he's immediately waived so they started they they put hinches in the rotation which we covered when we broke down the mets and then they just waved corniel and the tigers like okay we'll take him um what else was i doing oh anybody else no i think it was just morales and Tucker. Oh, and I, I definitely mentioned that Danny Rodriguez was up, but I don't know if I've highlighted how well he's been doing. It's 70 plate appearances, small sample, of course. 151 WRC plus, though, off to a fast start, almost already at a win. He's at 0.8 in 70 plate appearances. That's a wonderful pace. It will obviously smooth out a bit, but there's enough skills here uh, to remain a quality piece. Now, when we get, when we get J-Rod back, Morales is definitely sent out. And then Khalil Watson won't be back this year, I don't think. So he won't he won't push anybody. Not that he's that good anyway, unfortunately. But yeah, I think we'll be good there. Oh, Bustamantes has three weeks left. Honestly, honestly, that will just depend who's playing well. I, I'm not necessarily going to send Rodriguez or Tucker out for uh, Busta. Boost to boost, bust to bust, because he's been he's been terrible, plain and simple. He's been awful. So we'll see. That that is a that is a TBD sitch, if I've ever heard one. Oh, Juan Sierra, I remember him. I say I remember him as if he's not still in our organization. Um, I'm aware the, of his production here is what I mean to say. So he was rule fived, and then they had to give him back, right? Yes. And what's interesting, and you know, sometimes a crunch just happens. It's not always about the the raw performance, and it's a small sample anyway. Um, so let's not freak out. But you know, hey, he had 13 plate appearances. He was doing very well in his very limited time. <laughs> Poor Juan Sierra, but they brought him. They gave him back to us. We got him in AAA right now, and then Tony Zapeda default shortlist drafted. I have no idea. Just just a draft guy that I put on the default list. All right, so let's do this. Let's go and put it on simulation speed. Let's do 40. See how quick that goes. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's fine. We'll see how that kind of runs, and then we'll look at Milwaukee's uh, so let's meet the Brewers now they're kind of working their way back up I mentioned this a little bit with 
Philly. Philly's in a better spot right now, but both teams have had their success earlier in the franchise. They're both trying to work back up. Philly's in a better spot right this moment, but uh, we've seen the Brewers be great. They won the very first World Series back in 2022. They made the playoffs the very next year, 2023. They were... eh, the next two years, again, run-of-the-mill bad team, 75-71 wins. Then they won 102, didn't do anything with it in the playoffs. Actually, I don't know. They could have gone to the World Series for all I know, but they didn't win the World Series. How about that? Then they uh, made the playoffs in 2027, and then they've been dry since. Three straight last-place finishes, 66-96. and 96, That's pretty crummy, but then 73-89. Okay, are they coming back this year? It's only 51-63. and 63. They still have time to build on last year's 451 win percentage and you know maybe push even to 500 if they really got going. I hope they don't start right now. But it, it's looking like another crummy season as they kind of get everything back in order here. So they were projected last in the, in the NL Central. And, uh, well, things have greatly changed since I took those notes. That's the interesting thing about this because at the time... Back when it was, uh, you know, sometime in late June, I was probably taking these numbers. They were leading a weaker division at one game over 500 and plus four on their Pythag. That's what it was at that time. Now, you see, in July, they went eight and 16. They're one and two so far in August. And they were only 14 and 15 in June. So they weren't even that good there. But a 19 and nine May briefly had them leading the division. They are only five and a half back, though. So you understand that, like, this recent suck stretch is a big problem, but they are still just a big run away from kind of getting back into the mix. They, they could, they could, uh, bad offense outside of speed. And that's still holding true. A lot of double digit rankings here in the first handful of ranks, 14th and extra base hits last in the NL and homers, but third in stolen bases and base running. And then on the pitching side, decent pitching they were tied for or they were they were first in strikeouts when i took the notes they're now tied for third so that was the only reason i gave them decent pitching a lot of double digit rankings now i I would go a little bit below decent because they're not even first in strikeouts anymore so again they're not very good right now let's look at some of their studs check out their team composition here and you can see a lot of uh a lot of the uh, Roy end of the Roy G. Biv spectrum. You want to be Biven a lot more. You want to be on the Biv side. You want to be Biven your life away. That's uh, that's blue, indigo, and violet. I know they don't go as high as, as that. I should say G. Biv, green, green, blues. But uh, yeah, they're on the red, orange, yellow stuff over here. They have three positions that are ranked 27th or worst on offense. And... They're all important. Center field, shortstop, and third base. Yikes. They still have Luis Urias uh, tied for 12th at second base. Chris Anglin, he's hurt right now, but he's tied for ninth among starters. I hope he becomes the ninth best starter in the league for the Tigers. They just traded for him uh, in real life. And then Alexis Diaz closing. Alex Scherf. Um, Alexis Diaz is 23rd amongst closers. He's a 60. He seems decent enough. I don't know. Alex Scherf is 6th among relievers. Um, Jesus Bastadas is 18th first baseman. Brandon Valenzuela is the, tied for the 22nd catcher. Seiya Suzuki is 15th in right field. And Riley Green is their best player, 6th in left field. So, he is definitely their best hitter. Oh, yeah, Suzuki was hurt when I took the notes, too. Is he back? He is. But Casey Mize is hurt now. Four months, surgery to remove bone chips. Yikes. He'd only had seven innings of work this year anyway. Uh Uh-oh. He's fragile. Things are not going well there. Uh, They got Danny Castillo, who is out for five months. Yikes, dude. Fan fave, who was pitching pretty well. That's a big loss. Willie Gomez, who's... uh, A prospect of note here, 82nd prospect. He might graduate due to service time, but he's out for four months as well. He wasn't pitching all that well, but he does have 55 upside. He's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's a big loss. I mentioned Chris Anglin, who's just got, he's a stuff monster. 80 80 stuff, and that carries the day for him. But he does have 45 movement, 45 control. But he was pitching well. 
338 ERA, 120 whips. That's a huge loss. What's he got? Torn labrum. Yikes, dude. They're getting devastating pitching injuries. And then Caden Byer. It's just a solid 45 arm, nothing crazy. But when they lost all his other arms, he's also a bone chips guy. Uh, that just makes it, you know, that. Uh, then you lose a guy like that, and then it's just when it rains, it pours type of deal. We can't even keep our mid tier guys. Our backfill is even getting hurt, you know? Let's see their trainer. Does he even do his job? Scott Behringer. I mean, he's got lots of green here. It's just a bad year, man. It's just a bad year, and it happens like that sometimes. I've had I've had the glorious Rick Jameson on in seasons where I got just obliterated by injuries. It happens. Like that's that's sports, man. That's sports. You can't. You can only prevent them to a certain degree. You know. All right. So looking over their their stars here, they got Riley Green, who is their best hitter. He's still a sixty. He's a dog lover. Love that. He's twenty nine years old. Uh, 12 homers, 6 steals, 271, 347, 445. Now, looking at this, this is a little... So my, my, my comp for him, I've thought maybe uh, Michael Brantley with more pop. It's looking more like that, that you'd have to make too many qualifiers to make that comp because it's like, it's Michael Brantley, but with... Uh, less contact and more power, and it's like okay. Well, at that point, you've changed. You've changed the player, right? Because he's only hitting 270 career average is pretty good. But Michael Brantley, I think, might have an over 300 batting average. So the first thing that you're going to think with Michael Brantley is batting average, bat control, plate skills, etc. Yeah, he's a 298 career hitter, and he's only hit over 20 homers once. He's hit 20 one time and 22 another time. Green is just a Better power guy than that. He has three 20 homer seasons and a 30 homer season, 31. And he hit 16 another year in only 93 games. So he's been a much better power guy. He strikes out a bit more. He has decent batting averages at 270, uh, OBP at 343. But it's not a Michael Brantley comp anymore. And you gotta you gotta look somewhere else at that point. Let's compare them and see who they bring up. So they say some interesting guys from present time with Michael Harris. And Robert Hassel. Corey Hart's interesting. Jason Kubel was actually a guy I did think of. Now, he got ravaged by injuries, but I totally understand why he's in that comp tier. Michael Harris is an interesting comp because he's so much faster. What's Michael Harris become? What the hell? I clicked off. Michael Harris has become mostly a Yankee, by the way. One year with the Braves, 2022, and then he's been a, a Yankee. And he's been an, like a solid power speed guy. Yeah, just just a really solid fantasy player and real life player. Cool. Anyway, R Riley Green's their stud. Seiya Suzuki, he's back. He was injured when I was taking the notes. He's 35 at this point, very close to being 36. He's still under contract for another year guaranteed and then a vesting fifth year if he plays 135 games. So let's see. This is, uh, he's a 55 say a Suzuki is and he has a 117 WRC plus this year Riley Green by the way at 116 Luis Urias is a 55 as well he's 33 years old and he's at a 111 Jesus Bastidas is a 132 WRC plus Tyler Black is a 111 and then nobody else is over 100 they have two starters Brandon Valenzuela and Dian Jorge who are at 67 and 56 respectively. Now, it's the top two defensive positions, catcher and short, but still. First off, Valenzuela is a 50 catcher ability, so you can't just say, "Oh, we're taking, you know, Austin Hedges like hitting for Austin Hedges like defense because they're not." And then Valen and then Jorge is a solid fielder, 60 range. 65 error, 50 arm, 65 double play, 75 speed. But, you know, not like a holy crap shortstop. He's like, hey, I can hold shortstop. But do you really want to take 56 WRC plus for that? No, you certainly shouldn't. You're making the wrong choice if you think that. I will say that right now. But the absolute superstar of this team over any of the um, hitters is Hudson Luce, who we have been following throughout this sim. He is an 
uh, you know, talent change type guy who absolutely jumped and became a monster. Now, let me see if he's a real life player on their team right now. No, he didn't come up in their prospect list. He is 28 right now, about to be 29. So, okay. So he's at Temple, class of 2019. No, it says class of 2019, but oh, Temple College, not the Temple Owls. I think I've looked this up before. This seems very familiar. Right down to my surprise that it was the Temple Owls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see, he's got a tweet here. I'm excited to announce my commitment to play baseball at Texas Tech from 2021. Okay, so that was October of last year. So he must have played at Texas Tech this year. Is that correct? Now I go to the baseball cube for college stats generally. So that's where I'm going here. And he's not coming up. So I don't know what happened at Texas Tech. But he is not making this the kind of ripple he is in our world here. Hudson Luce has been an absolute god. He's a two-time Pedro Martinez Award winner, back-to-back -back in 2025 and 26. You see here, uh, let's take a look at the trajectory. So it was like a big talent change spike. In June of our first season, he was a 35 potential. Then he hit 55 that following March. And then it was 80 in August of that year, 2023. And it was over from there. And so the interesting thing is, too, he needed like no time in the minors. High A for 108 innings, five and two thirds at AAA, and then he's in the league. And he was, he took his growing pains. Hudson Luce, 562 ERA, 152 whip that first year. He took, he took it on the chin. But then I'm just going to give the war numbers from that. And I'll do our war based on the, the ERA you know, of like what happened. Not just the ERA, by the way, but it doesn't use FIP as its key driver the way Fangraphs does. Five wins, six wins, two wins, minus 0.2. So that's a really tough season. Back up to five and then three so far this year. Two and a half. You should at least get to three. It can go down, of course, but he's pitching all right this year. 414 ERA, 114 whip. He's awesome. He had the one crap year. He didn't get hurt or anything either. He threw 167 and two thirds with 30 starts. He just had a bad year, and it happens. Uh, it's crazy, though, because he had the back-to-back -back size, two pretty crummy. Like, even the two, point, two, two war of uh, 2027 is, like, from a Cy Young guy after he put up 11 war the two years combined. Um, but he walked 101 that year and didn't quite get everything back on track the following year, then dominated 2029, and then this year has been good. So... He's still just 28, about to be 29. He's still under contract, oh, for several more years. They said, let's make sure that we get all the good Hudson loose years. They have him for three more after this, all at 31 and a half, though. He's normal injury prone this, so he has not fallen apart health-wise, and he's an absolute G. So they got themselves an ace for sure. Now, they also have um, Scherf, Alex Scherf, yeah, Alex Scherf. Um, and before Edwin Diaz was traded, they had both Diaz's. Is that D-I <laughs> for the plural? But yeah, they had both Alexis and Edwin. But then they traded him as we uh, covered earlier. And they still have Aaron Ashby, who, uh, I mean, still has amazing stuff and all that. How's he been pitching? Okay, so he's had an interesting mix back. He won, he won a Pedro back in 2023, but then has really failed to recapture that excellence since he had six war that year the the immediate follow-up was a point minus half win season awesome two wins two wins three two we'll call it you know what 2.5 we're gonna round up nicely for him we'll call it three one uh lost injury season in 20 oh wait so this year wait he must have been hurt for some part of this because he's only pitched 30 innings T torn flexor tendon uh, from August of last year was a seven to eight month injury. So he debuted this year, well, in late April. I don't understand why he has so few. That seems like so few innings. 
30 innings all year for Aaron Ashby? I guess. I mean, he's a reliever, but our relievers got way more than that. Yeah? I don't know. Ben Bowden's been on the team all year, I guess, and he has 31 innings. I don't know. I guess he's just not getting used a lot. I just thought he'd be more of a power-used type guy. He's down to a 25 stamina, though, so he doesn't have that extra juice. So that makes sense. And Scherf is their stud ace reliever, 65 uh, overall with a 65 stuff and movement, 55 control, 25 stammy. 251 ERA is great, but 139 whip does say that it's a bit dicey. And I wonder if the defense is failing him because he has a 341 BABIP. He doesn't have a, he has a 55 control. He does have an 11% walk rate though. So he's kind of underperforms his, um, his control number. And that can go back to the catcher because in our world here, actually, let me make sure. Um, oh, this is all unavailable during real time sim. Okay. Hang on. I did it in my Dillos. I'm not sure if I did it here, but I think I have framing turned up to um, seven. No, where do I, where is that? Rules? No. Players? No, I clicked that like five times. Stats and AI. Okay, no, it's just five here. Okay. I might change it in the off season. I don't like to change things in the middle of the year, but I've been moving my other ones up to seven. I made this one. This is obviously one of my older Sims, so I wasn't doing it then yet. But either way, um, even at five, the fact that they don't have a good framer is probably hurting somebody like Scherf there and all of their pitchers. So that's the, that's the Brewers. Let's see how we've done against them. Oh, we only got through one game there. I guess the, the 40 factor is a little bit slow. That's fine. It, it served its purpose. We won 3-0. Becerra was excellent. Seven scoreless. Four strikeouts, ten punchies. Ferguson Puente closed it out. The Dooch hit his fourth homer of the year. Rodriguez, Colmenares each drove in a run. Ho-hum, get it done. We've now won... Well, we swept them to end the month in Milwaukee, which is pretty great. And then, so that's three, six, seven in a row. Make it eight. Ah, seven, one loss. Uh-oh. Arcadia Muller still suffering from the sore ankle. I, I almost, 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 almost sat him. Or no, 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 that's the ankle. Hang on. We have concurrent injuries now. Oh, so now he has a strained hamstring on... T no, these are out of order. No, no. The strained hamstring is the problem. Now the sore ankle has become a part of that, like a chain reaction. I'm sitting him. Uh, the main reason I was pushing is because, you know, we're four, four and a half back. We're trying to secure our spot for everything. I cannot lose him for an extended period, though. It's too scary. We got to sit him out. Retroactive to 8-6, so that's a day. It's 10 days. We got to do it. We got to. Got to be smart here. Got to get our boy a little breather. Jason Rebrook. No, oh, no, he's not really playing. Rowan Kelly. Feebo? Maybe Feebo time. I mean, he's as generic as it gets. As, you know, total fill-in. We really just need him to be a backup, though, because uh, Acosta's going to take the spot. Fibos 25. I think we can do it. We got spots on the 40. Yeah, we'll go Fibo. Fibo or Sierra? Sierra does have that great set of plate skills, some speed. His defense is a good bit worse. But you know what? Sorry, Fibo. Oh, man, he called his parents and told them he was getting called up. Psych. No, you're not. Could you imagine? I would never do that. That'd be so mean. Who's on the 40? JoJo, Coffee, Purify? Eh, coffee, I mean. Nah, I want to see what's up with Sierra with these plate skills. I don't expect too much of it from it. But let's see if he can parlay. And he's on a hot streak. Let's see if uh, 
Let's see if this gets him unmad. Great. Oh, wow. He went from angry to great. Roll on team. That, that's probably not going to change much for you, bud. You are a left-handed batter. That's going to help. Okay. Okay. This better put you in a better mood. You're leading off against righties. And you're still angry. Call Black's leadership. This has to still be about the triple-A team, right? It has to be. Okay. He, it has to update. We do not lack leadership. No the hell we do not. Team chemistry is ecstatic. We love each other so much. All right, but Acosta will start against lefties. Actually, wait. God, Colmenares is so bad against lefties. Does anybody else have any infield vibes to them? Dude. Cashman's terrible against lefties. See, that's the problem, is the performance against lefties. Yeah, I'm going to go Acosta Colmenares here. Because Sierra does get, has a pretty big split. He loses 10 I, 5 avoid K, 10 power, 10 contact and gap. It's terrible against lefties. Absolutely terrible. All right, we'll go with this. Justin Tucker, also a lefty. So many lefties. All right, let's get this series from Milwaukee here. There we go. 2-1 dub. Who needs offense? Offense, schmoffense. Sh Got him. <laughs> Grayson Rodriguez, strong outing. Turned it over to Morissette, Povich, Ferguson, Puente. And they shut it down. Let's go. Four at San Francisco. Heading out to the bay. We get the first one, 7-2. Highland Hall have a day. Two homers up to 27, three for five. Five ribbies, two runs. Byro with his eighth homer of the year. Three hits for Danny Rodriguez. Let's go. Manoa, Sharp, Morissette, Povich, Ferguson, Mata. That was the same trio except Puente at the end, right? From the previous game? I like that. Let's get another one here in the Bay Area. Two to one win. Let's go and J-Rod's back. Yay, yay. All right. That is wonderful news. Ricky Morales, thanks for playing. See ya. There it goes. See ya. All right, we got a stud bag, baby. Stud alert. Now... Here's something interesting. Danny Rodriguez is playing his ass off, y'all. Justin Tucker, playing his ass off. They're both playing very well. Highland Hall, obviously not going anywhere. I wonder if Luis Matos is about to be squeezed out a little bit here. He's only a 101 WRC plus against righties. 111 against lefties. T Money been getting some left field time. He's not doing enough to earn that. Yoink, that goes by the wayside. D-Rod. 146 against righties. Only 68 plate appearances, but it's enough to get the starting role. Matos to the bench. He's not going to like that. I don't really care. I do not care. I'll get him in every fourth for Tucker. He has a 120 WRC plus against righties, which is still very good. And then against lefties, Matos will stay in with D-Rod and J-Rod because Tucker's a lefty who can't hit lefties. Per huge. All right, Coleman is batting second against any handedness is vile. Turner has been dreadful against lefties, never mind. Thought I was doing something there, being cute. Absolutely not. All right. And then J-Rod batting first against righties, of course. I bet some of y'all, if you were watching instead of second screening, probably thought I was going to forget that. Because that's some shit I would do. 
So I understand, but I didn't. Go me doing the bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's take this series. It's a four pack. Ah, we lost that one, so now we have to. We're guaranteed the split, but we want we want the series on the four pack. Uh, day to day mild abstrain for Colmenares. It's going to affect everything minimally. He's been so bad. I'm gonna pop him on the IL. We got Muller back in seven days, so that's not really gonna help. Um, now we'll call somebody up. Let's see who, who's going to get the call. Back to FIBO, I think. Yep, I think that's the play. Or Jordan Haya. Nah. FIBO it is. Jorge Barroso, should he be playing? Nah, he's okay. Is anybody doing well that's not playing a spark? Uh, these are all tiny sample guys, so I'm not as worried about, about it. I wonder if Kelly maybe should play a little bit more. Rowan Kelly. Who's playing the outfield? We got Cabbage Stock, who I'm playing on, on force because I'm like trying to turn him into something because all our first-round picks suck. Not my strength, apparently. <laughs> the easiest picks, not my strength. Sick life, Paul. Oh, no. First round picks, yeah. No, you'll, you'll have some success in those. You know, those are the best players. Okay, cool. I'll fail on every single one. Awesome. Asparza, maybe? Asparza, where do you play? Not really anywhere. You're quite bad. Holy crap, you're terrible. Saucedo is DHing for a reason. We should also consider trading him. He's got he's smart, but everything else is pretty bad on his profile. He's got that 70 pop. No position. That's ripe for a trade. Um Jason Rebrook? No. I've just seen if any of these guys that even are performing in small samples like need to be put in the lineup somewhere, and I'm not really seeing it. So Marco Smith. Is not going to come out. Even though he's not playing well. At all. Maybe he's, maybe he's uh, overly challenged here. I'm going to send him back down. He, was, he wasn't killing it in double A. With a 108 WRC plus. I moved him up as a bit of a challenge. But he's at 62 WRC plus. 21 years old. I don't want this to get totally stunted. I think moving back, it, it angers him partly because they're so bad. Remember, our minor league records are god awful. I need to improve on that, or else we're going to just stunt everyone's growth. And then, let's see here. I oh, know you guys got to get Marco Smith in. There we go. Ortega, nah, don't really need to fit him in. He's a spark plug, but I don't know. He's not that good. Okay. Let's get back to the majors and J-Rod's back, baby. Let's get the rest of this series. Do we lose in 16? 4-3 in 16 innings. Wow, Becerra and Juan then were dominant. Oh, not wow. We had one of those games where... We're in deep in extras. We score two in the 13th. We give the two right back. And then they score one in the 16th. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. J-Rod didn't go three for six. Welcome back, baby. Adrian Shagasti. That's an interesting name. That's an interesting name indeed. All right. Tough loss there. Let's get this series still. Come on now. Frick. All right. Well, we split... That's fine. At least you guarantee the split out front, then you're kind of free rolling, but to not win the series, kind of tough. A little tough, a little tough. All right, Graham Ashcraft is back. Who's getting the boot? Our pitching's so good. I guess Mata's on a uh, cold streak, but he's out of option here, so we can't send him down anyway. I was going to suggest maybe doing that, but 
and it's not gonna happen. Oh yeah, 12 ERA and a 213 whip in July. 675 ERA this month, but only a .75 whip. And I don't mean that sarcastically, that's, that's obviously really good. Um, let's see. Excuse me. Is Barriera, he can't get sent down because he's been sent down already? No? We claim him off waivers, but we can send him down, right? It was just a numbers crunch for them. I mean, he's pitching well. Like, it, it seems unfair. I guess let's see what Ashcraft's been doing first. Ashcraft had been pretty good when he got hurt. Split roll. 10 starts, 15 relief appearances, 305 ERA, 124 whip. Dominant in the bullpen, 180 ERA, 115 whip. Solid as a starter, 352, 127 combo. So that's all good and whatnot. Um, sheesh. I don't really know what, what to do here. This is the one downside of like trying to be or or not trying to be I am like but being obsessed with um like waiver plays and stuff and always wanting to flex that is because you get a situation where one, two, three, four, five, six, six of your thirteen pitchers cannot be moved down. They just can't. I I think I think Barry Air is gonna get numbers numbers game squeezed here. I feel bad. I mean, it's not really him, so it's fine. But I mean, you know, if this were to happen in real life, it's like, damn, dude, 26 year old doing his thing. He has been a little bit better than Morissette, but Morissette's been here for 88 and two thirds versus 17 innings. So yeah, barrier it is not a bad spot to be in that we can actually do that. We got Palencia coming here too. With Palencia, we're going to send him out on rehab. Just to buy some time, to be honest. Because uh, I, I, don't, I don't have a spot right now. Like, I don't know where to put him. So, let's see what they do. They put him as the closer. Cool. And Barriera starting. I like that. Manny Smith. Should we be starting him? No. Uh, no, no, no. Tw change up 25. Never mind. I, di I didn't see that. No, 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 no. God, no. God, no. All right, I think everything else is fine. Let's get back to it. Check some emails. Portillo. Who's Ricky Portillo? I mean, why do I care? He is a Jupiter Hammerhead who is having an okay year. Oh, solid defender, but unmotivated low leader scouting discovery from 2026 yeah who cares texas center fielder oh dylan carlson he's on the original wish list uh ramon Sauceda, let's go there we go nine hit three homer nine ribby week and then ha Sion kim also on the uh also on the list here the wish list not anymore, but I just I kept those same guys on the wish list, even though, no, I do not desire a thir what thirty four year old Hasian Kim. Now, is he playing for the DSL team, bro? Come on, he's up to double A, but my goodness, give this man some dignity. Do not make him play there. Did Hasian Kim go to SUNY Adirondack Community College? I don't think that's true. Did he go in the off season or something? Now that's a storyline. Anyway, who knows? Good for him though for getting that player of the week in whatever league he was in. Trip to Texas for two, we lose the first. We win the second, a little splitty there. Manoa solid in the dub. Highland Hall hit his 28th, Justin Tucker hit his third in the loss, 5-2. Grayson, uh-oh. Grayson injured. Mata came in, only threw two innings. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. 
Grayson. Oh, speaking of wish list guys, you on Duran out for the year. But uh, are we in trouble here? What's Grayson up to? We do not know yet. Okay, we wait with bated breath. This is not good. This is this is nerve wracking. Standings check. Three and a half back. Five and a half clear on the wild card. All right. We're in a good spot here. RA9 War. Shane Boz is second. ERA. Becerra is second. Winning streak. Grayson Rodriguez has a 10 game winning streak, but it is no longer. The star means it's active. All right, let's uh, let's at least see what's up with Grayson. We get another day off. We get three days off in a very short span. Not saying anything about it. One to two weeks with a dead arm. Okay. Honestly, all things considered, could be a lot worse, right? Could be a lot worse. This is actually not the end of the world. A little break to end August. He sits out the dog days with a little dead arm. Comes back for the stretch run. I think it's I. Right. I think we're fine. You know? So we'll put Ashcraft in the rotation here. And we're going to run with 12 right now. And we're just going to sim ahead one day. Even though it is a game day. Because Muller's coming right back. Boom. So then we will use Grayson's move to get Muller back. Should we really be playing him at short? Probably not. Oh, God. So, Comanerez being nicked. and He's only got four days left, so we'll be all right. It's just four days with a crap shortstop. I guess it'll be Muller. Ugh. That's scary. That could be a hilariously bad few days of uh, infield defense there. There has to be an easier way to do that, right? Like, you should be able to, like, right-click and say, set lineup spot. Oh, you can swap or set. But if I inserted him, okay, let's, let's do what I was thinking here. If he's down here and I say move him up to one, does that move everyone else down or just? So they do have it. Of course they do. Of course, I should have known. I should have known. Oh, TP, I'm sorry. How dare I? How dare I even suggest that you wouldn't already have that? That you wouldn't already have that? I disgust myself. How dare I? There had to be an easier way. I've been playing this game for freaking like 20 years and I just figured out to, to do that. Sick life, Paul. So we're running with a heavy hitter right now. An extra hitter. Probably don't need to. We can send Feebo down. Let's see what sort of pitching we got awaiting us. On the secondary roster, we have Eater, Omasako, and Weber. You know, nothing, nothing too much really moving the needle. You know what? I I'll go with the extra. I'll go with the extra um, bat for for a few games here. Maybe I'll call up Chris Bowen. It's just for relief anyway, so it doesn't have to be anybody that's like eye popping. Oh, Barriera's coming back up. No, no, no. I'm a goofus. My bad. Sometimes you lose track of a guy, even though you were talking about him like 20 seconds ago. Now, we'll just do that right now. Feebo, sorry, bud. Brief, brief stay there. It's just how the numbers play sometimes, my dude. Barriera, come on back. And then pitching back to the bullpen. And then we're back to four and four with lefties and righties too. So that's cool. All right. We won three, two and 10. Four hits for Justin Tucker, a little four for four piece. A couple doubles for him there. Danny Rodriguez had a couple hits. Shane Boz, brilliant. Six innings of one hit ball. It was a solo shot maybe, no? Oh, no, he had a walk as well. I saw the one hit, one run. I was like, oh, home run. No, because there was a walk, too. So it was a double. Um, and he and Correa, not Carlos Correa. It was uh, Juan Pablo Correa. He did drive in the run. He probably drove in the guy who took a walk. Damn, this guy's interesting. So Juan Pablo Correa has 23 homers, 
and a nice, a nice little, uh, you know, solid 102 WRC plus, only hitting 202 with a 311 OBP, but a 417 slug. Now, 417 on its face does not tell you a whole lot. You're like, okay, that's fine. Anything over 400, you're like, that's kind of just getting into the in the gate there. You know, if you're sub 400 slug, what are you doing? Uh, but 417 4, with a 202 average, that's why I like ISO because. 215 ISO is pretty good. Anything over 200 shows some real pop with ISO. Game two, we win. 3, 2, and 10. Same exact thing. Let's go. Ashcraft, not great in three and two thirds. He did get hurt. And so did Juan Sierra, both while throwing the ball. Sick throws, guys. Justin Turner hit his 32nd, baby. Let's go. Love Justin Turner. Or Jonathan Turner. I keep calling him Justin Turner because we have Justin Tucker, too, who's named, you know, the football player, uh, kicker, hook him horns. So I get confused. Jonathan Turner, Jonathan Turner, Jonathan Turner. We lose 2-1. Three one-run games. Hell of a series there. Pirates gave us all we can handle. They're 61-66, and 66, though. They're not a walkover. Becerra was brilliant. Puente gave it up. There wasn't much offense to go around. O'Neill Cruz had a single, or excuse me, had a triple and a homer his 20th of the year. We only had four total hits. They only had three. Cruz had two of them. Yeesh. All right. Uh, what's up with those injuries? Any Mexican League players that we want? Not those four. Nope. League punishes pair for fighting. Oh, shit. Osorio fighting. Boy, who's you fighting? Who is you fighting? Well, I mean, Javi Cifuentes is who he's fighting. It's pretty, it's right there, right? I didn't really have to ask. Juan Sierra, tender shoulder, one week. You already know what we're doing with that. Graham Ashcraft, sore back, one week. I'll let Graham Cracker ride out. I'll sit him out here and Mata will take his next start. But with uh, Sierra, I think it's I think it's a send down or it's a uh, IL situation. He's not really doing anything anyway. Or I mean, it's only minimally affecting his throwing. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll just let Acosta get in a bit more often here, and even T Money. Actually, T Money should be starting against righties. Yeah, we got to do that. Dude, our lineup has enough enough depth that Highland Hall can bat sixth. That's crazy. Now, I actually don't want him that low, so I'm going to move Tucker down. I could have done that the other way. I now know that. Do I want three lefties in a row, though? Team Money is only an 86 WRC plus against righties, so he can bat last. Rodriguez is 107 against righties. He's better against lefties. And Tucker's 138 WRC+. Plus. 129, 152. You know what? I'm moving Highland Hall above Walker right now. He's just been excellent. All right, and then against lefties, all that's pretty square. Tucker, oh, it was six plate appearances. Never mind. I was like, he's unhit playable against lefties. I mean, I don't really want to play him because his numbers are much worse, but his the stats I was looking at were misleading with the tiny, 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 tiny sample. All right, let's finish out this month, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Got an off day. Got Oakland here. Take a loss against them. Coleman Ares is back. That will, that will be it for Sierra then. Colmenares back in. How did Muller do it short? It was probably bad, y'all. Minus 1.7 ZR in three games, and he has a minus 1.9 ZR in 104 at second base. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, bad, bad. But you know what? It was a brief moment in time. It had to be done. Just based on what we had, you know, we had we had to rock it, rock it, you know. 
Man, Turner's really bad against lefties. But T-Money is too. So there's no real reason to try to put anybody else in. And just ride it out. All right, so we lost 10-6 against Oakland. They're 49-81. and 81, So if we keep losing against them, I'm going to be pretty pissed. Take these other two games. Come on. 4-1 win. 7-2 win. Let's go. 4-1 win. Conwell hit his 15th homer. This is an interesting guy for them. His nickname is Ice Cream. Ice Cream Conwell, 24-year-old, drafted in the first round of 2025, fourth overall pick, durable, 70 contact, 65 gap, 50 homer, 45 I, and 80 avoid K with a five-point uh, potential on top of it. Could get up to 85. Solid speed at 60, 65 stealing, 45 base running. Not much of a fielder, though. And that definitely undercuts how nice this profile could be. He's from Austin. Maybe he lives next door to me. Who knows? Shane Baugh's brilliant in this game. Dude, I feel like Puente and Ferguson pitch every damn day. I love it. And then the 7-2 win. Mata, excellent in the fill-in role there for Ashcraft. Colmenares hit his ninth. That a baby? Get a little back going. Byro, three for three. Two hits for Hall. Two hits for D-Rod. All right. Out to Washington. Where are they? 73 and 59. Let's get a standings check. They are three games back, in, three and a half games behind us. We're three back of Atlanta still. Six and a half clear on our wild card spot. All three wild cards are from our division right now. Let's freaking go. Okay, Washington. A little three set right here. We need it. Game one, ours. 12 4. Let's go, baby. D Rod, second homer. Highland Hall, two more to reach 30, including a grand slam in a three-run shot. He had seven ribs. Matos hit his 12th. Let's go. Becerra, strong. He did give up four runs, but only two were earned. He grinded out seven innings. Ashcraft is back. He still has one day left on the sore back, but he did throw two strong innings here. We beat up a guy named Powell, Holden Powell. Actually, they went opener there. He was not hurt. Never mind. Um, Morion, Thompson, what, they're just using our guys against us? How's Mason Thompson been? Didn't they try to start him earlier in the year, or was that a different sim? He only has two starts, never mind, it's a different sim then. Um, and it did not work, by the way. He was a brilliant, brilliant reliever for us. Very happy with what he did. 274 ERA, 104 whip, and 338 and two-thirds for Mason Thompson. All right, game two at Washington. Ah, we lose 3-1. Bust the bus is back. You can hit the rehab, buddy. Four days left for Grayson Rodriguez, and then he'll be back. We need it. We need it. Let's get this dub here. It's only a three-game set. We got it. We got the series. 9-2 win. Let's go. Everybody but Coleman has got a hit. He went 0 for 5. He did have a ribby, so he contributed, and he probably played good defense. He is, he is a good defender. Uh, Rodriguez hit his third. Tucker hit his fourth. Muller hit his 28th. Let's go. Manoa, sharp. Turned it over to Matt Allen and then Brandon Barriera. Let's take a look at Matt Allen's relief numbers. 241 ERA, 1.0 whip. Still don't understand why he started the All-Star game. I'm not here to, to figure that out, though. He's been awesome. He's been awesome since going into the bullpen. I would have rather not pay 9.2 mil to a reliever, but all in all, not the end of the world. All right, we got four at the Cubs and then two at the Braves. We might just do the four at the Cubs, and we'll start with the two at the Braves next episode. They're 68 and 67. Where are they? Oh, they're leading their division. That's one game up on the Pirates, three on the Cards, four on the Reds, eight and a half on the Brewers. They've fallen on hard times. I was looking for the Cubs in the wild card. I was like, where are they? Well, they're leading the division, so they don't have to worry about that right now. Until we rock them. We're going four in Chicago. Here we go. Game one, 5-3 dub. Everyone but, but the douche got a hit. Our number nine spot's cursed. J-Rod, 14th homer. Matos, 13th. Boz, solid outing. Puente, Ferguson, Morris set that trio. Pitches a lot together. Alex Kirloff hit his 10th in the losing effort. Game two. Oh, 9-8 loss in 10. What a game. Uh oh, what happened to Tucker? No, nothing. He just got pulled out to give Muller a pinch in, and then 
uh, Matos came into play some fielding and ended up batting twice. Highland Hall, another two homer game. He's up to 32. Coleman Harris popped his 10th. Jordan Walker is 31st. And Matos hit his 14th. I love the homers, baby. Danny Rodriguez already has 13 steals. Three homers, 13 steals, 326 average, 367 OBP, and a 475 slug. Danny Rodriguez has been a stud. Welcome to the team, good sir. Jared Walsh hit his 12th. Moises Ballesteros hit his uh, first ever, maybe. Indeed, it's his first game ever. He went four for four with a homer and a double against us. Okay, welcome to the league, Ballesteros. He's an okay catcher. Shows lack of effort, though. Low work ethic. That's tough for a catcher. That Honestly, that's like one of the few things that is a thousand percent disqualifying for me. I won't, I won't put you on the team. No shot. Low work ethic catcher. No way. We lose game three. Grayson's back. He's going to get this, uh, this game four start here to try to save it, salvage the split for us. Can he do it? We shall see. Y'all, we're going to have to make a tough move here. Oh, no, never, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I just keep forgetting that poor Brandon Barriere is right there to have his heart ripped out again. <laughs> it's like, oh, geez, I thought I was going to stick this time. All right, Dustin May, you get moved. Strict order so they don't get funky on me. I want I want Grayson starting this. We lost 3 1. Brendan Davis hit his 16th and Lamont Wade Jr. hit his 19th. Reed Detmers opened or started but got hurt. Now he's out two to three months. Yikes. Becerra was perfectly fine. We just didn't have any offense. I can't be mad at that effort. All right, Grayson, come on. Boom. 7 4 dub. Grayson, okay in his return. Six innings, four runs on four hits, two walks, eight punches. We love the, we love the strikeout total there. Ferguson, Puente, Morris set all pitch. So did uh, Ben Bowden. He got the save. Tanner Houck got roughed up. Five walks, four hits, six runs. Matos hit his 15th. Danny Rodriguez hit his third triple. And Bio, uh, uh, Biro hit his 18th double. All right, so that's going to wrap us up. Ends up being a bit of a longer episode. I hope you guys don't mind. I um, usually don't get complaints about that, but I was trying to keep it a little bit tighter. But we ended up covering two teams, covered the deadline, uh, got through pretty much all of August. I will be into September. I'll probably sim a little bit offline and maybe. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, I won't. I won't because this is a huge series. I want to do this one on, on video. Um, and then, oh, my God, we just live in the division in September. We have two games against Baltimore and then all of the rest are divisional. And the season ends in September this year. I don't even know why I clicked October. It's, it ends after the 26th. Why would we have five days off? So September is going to be amazing. So let's set the stage real quick here. Three and a half back of Atlanta with three, four, five, six, seven left against them. Washington. Is uh, Washington and the Mets are still very much in it. They both hold wild cards with us. Philly's only three and a half back. Pittsburgh four back. Arizona five. Cardinals seven. Um, but those, uh, the Diamondbacks and Cardinals are under 500. The Pirates are 500. So it's really a big battle between our division and we face each other. There's going to be so much craziness back and forth. Oh my goodness. In the American League. You've got the Red Sox with a one-game lead over the Orioles, 80 and 55 against 80 and 57. The Tigers have a half-game lead over the Royals, four over the uh, Twins, who have a perfect record at 69 and 69. The Rangers still lead their division. Now they are under 568 and 69. Unbelievable. You've got the Orioles, Yankees, Royals holding the wild cards with the Jays just a game and a half back, the Twins three and a half back. So. Lots to be decided here in September. It's going to be a hell of a race. And, of course, the last two games of, uh, of August, just for the technical Tommies out there. I know we're not in September yet. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. We're back with September. And probably going to meet, uh, let's see, who's the last team on my list here? The Padres. I'll see if I can fit that in because we're not playing them. So that might, be, that might get pushed to the offseason. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Peace.